What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I am doing a build. I'm very excited about this build because uh, it's inside of a new case that everyone's been building in lately, but this is my first time building in it. And it's a very special case actually, a special variant of the Lian Lee PCO11 Dynamic Mini, but this is the Snow Edition. Now, Lian Lee does have PCO11 Dynamics that have been mostly white in the past, but they've always been two-toned. They've been white and silver. Usually this, this panel right here is silver and there's more silver accents elsewhere in the case. This is just a white out case. It's, it's completely whited out and it's not even for sale yet. Lee and Lee's actually considering selling this case if there's enough demand for it. So I don't know, blow them up on Twitter or, 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 or leave a comment saying that you really want this case to go on sale if, if you actually like it and would like to buy it at some point. I think it looks fantastic. One of the things I always, just wasn't my favorite thing about the other white O11Ds uh, was that silver strip. Obviously it looks really great when you've got other silver accents inside the chassis, but if you're just going for a pure white aesthetic, it, it doesn't get much better than this folks. And I'm really excited just about this case in general. And by the way, the, the way that the Snow Edition came about is that Lee and Lee had already been getting enough requests to, to, to make an all white edition case for the PCO11D. And here we are. They just need, like I said, a little bit more demand. They need to see a little bit more uh, interest in this particular model in order to actually put it on store shelves. So again, let Lee and Lee know directly or leave a comment down below saying how much you wanna buy one of these cases. But you know, what if you still want the case and you just don't wanna spend money on it? You know, what, what if you just want it for free? It, it's almost like Lee and Lee should do a giveaway of a couple of these cases and, and make it an international thing. Oh my gosh, that's 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 in fact what is happening here. So Lee and Lee's Christmas snowy, oh gosh, I, I forget the name. Lee and Lee's snowy Christmas giveaway, that's it. They are giving away two of these Snow Edition O11D minis to one of you lucky few who are watching this very video. Go ahead and enter the Gleam link in the description below and you may very well win one of these guys. So that's pretty exciting. Thanks to Lee and Lee for setting that giveaway up and for making this possible, making this whole build possible. And good luck to everyone who enters. Let's move on. All right, uh, this is gonna be a pretty epic build. Let's just kind of go down the line here. We'll, we'll start over here. Also the first time I'm using these, the Lee and Lee Uni fans. These are the SL120s in white, of course. And uh, these, these fans have been all the rage on the interwebs. A lot, of, uh, a lot of other PC builders and reviewers have already used these fans. They are awesome. You can connect them seamlessly with a single cable. I, I believe it's just a single RGB cable. And you can connect a ridiculous number of fans together and just daisy chain them because there's actually just gold contacts in between where they, where they each connect. So it's a, it's a beautiful, elegant solution that really cleans up the otherwise hassle that is RGB wiring. Power supply, we've got an 850 watt ASUS ROG Strix, wide edition of course, thanks to ASUS as well for providing uh, all of their hardware here. A very lovely PSU that will actually be pairing with the Lian Lee streamer cables. These are RGB cables, and it's cool because even when they're off, they're white. So it, it matches even when it's off, uh, but when they're on, it just looks absolutely incredible. So for our cooler, we have an ASUS ROG Strix LC240 RGB Liquid AIO, also white dish, of course. I don't think I've ever used this cooler in white. I believe I've used the black version. I've never seen what it looks like in white. So I'm actually kind of curious how good of a job. The ASUS usually does a really good job with, with white components. And we're gonna be using one of their GPUs uh, that's a white edition as well. And our CPU is a Ryzen 7 5800X, eight core, 16 thread, Zen 3 processor. Oh yes, this is not the actual retail box. This is just a placeholder. This is actually a 3700X box, but rest assured we'll be putting a uh, 5800X in here, which is fan freaking fantastic. We also have 30 32 gigs of DDR4 memory from Corsair. This is their Dominator Platinum RGB, 32 gigs. This is a four by eight gig kit at DDR4 3600 speed, white edition. These look really nice and white. A lot of parts in this build I have not used before because you know, just all white components are not quite as common as uh, the traditional black slash grayscale options. So a lot of firsts for me here as well too. Asus ROG Strix B550A gaming motherboard. This board looked incredible online. That's actually how this started. I, I hit up Asus, well, Lee and Lee contacted me first to do the video. And then I was like, hmm, white components. I could either go Corsair or I could go Asus. And I saw this board and I was like, I'm going Asus because that board is sexy. That's, that's what my stream of consciousness sounds like, yes. And then we have our graphics card. Like I said, Asus ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti white edition. Now, yes, it's not a super sexy brand new RTX 3000 series Ampere graphics card. Do you even, do you, do you really, do you hear the tone in my voice? How I'm like sounding disappointed in this $1,200 GPU? That's now probably, you know, equivalent to a $500 GPU like the RTX 3070, but at least this is available 
or I shouldn't say it's available. At least I have this in my office and I don't have a white Ampere or RX 6000 series GPU on hand, so this is gonna have to do. Plus, had I gone with an RTX 3080 or 3090 or something like that, that was aftermarket, there's a fair chance it would have had triple A pin power connectors, which would not work with the streamer cables. Yes, I am sacrificing a ton of power for aesthetics. Have you not, have you not seen this channel before? Okay. Um, <laughs> That being said, this is still going to be an insanely fast system when all is said and done for gaming, for streaming, for content creation, virtually anything that you throw at it, for the most part, within reason. I'm pretty stoked. Let's get building. Okay, here we go. Mm, mm, this board, this board. See, this board actually would have worked with the non-Snow Edition uh, O11D because it does have silver accents. But that being said, I still like the way the Snow Edition looks way more over the original white O11D. So there's the board. Ain't you party boys and gals? All right, let's get the CPU in here. So here's my 5800X processor. Hopefully the CPU cooler, the AIO that we're putting in here, utilizes the uh, included AMD brackets and we won't have to remove those. But I suppose we'll see. Usually I like to install the CPU cooler before the memory because the memory can get in the way being so close to the CPU, especially if it's like a, like a mini ITX board or something like that. But let's see what we got here. Oh, okay. So instead of using the included fans, you know, that, the, that came with the cooler, I'm actually, these are nice fans. I like these fans. They are RGB as well. I'm going to use the uni fans because they're uni fans. I want that uniform look. Okay. Oh, it's a different, it's a different bracket. It's a different bracket, I think. But at least we can keep the, uh, the AM4 backplate, obviously. Ha ha! Gotta love how easy coolers are to install these days. AAOs particularly. Not all AAOs. Some AAOs are very difficult and I hate them. But usually the Acer Tech models are super easy to install. And air coolers are just kind of all over the place. You never know what you're gonna get with a, an air cooler installation. Thermal paste is pre-applied, so that makes it easy. Look at the, look, at, they've already got an Intel bracket on here by default, right out of the box. That's, that's favoritism. That's, I find that offensive. Um, all right, this goes tubes. Tubes on the right, on the right side, I believe. Okay. So far, I'm liking the way this cooler looks. The water block looks really clean. It's not too aggressive. And the paint job looks fantastic. I love the white sleeved hoses. They're doing it for me. And the radiator looks really good too. It's got almost like a shiny, like almost looks glittery. Maybe it's just the, the way that the light's hitting it right now. But this is a nice looking cooler for sure. Oh, this is a nice touch. I like, I like that the, the cable is white as well. Although I wouldn't have minded it black just because most motherboard PCBs are black and it'd be a little bit easier to, to hide away, to not stand out, but it's still kind of cool. They should have made the twist tie white too. What a missed opportunity. Mm. Okay, don't tell me I'm the only one who does that, who uses their teeth to, to get a, a twist tie started. You guys are with me, right? You're like, sure, kind of whatever you're done. You're not wrong. Oh man, that twist tie looks pretty horrible. It'd be fine if it was a black cable. See, that was the other thing too. Eh, you know what? Once the RAM's in there, let's get the RAMs. Let's get the RAM going. Ram, I need somebody ram, not just anybody ram. What? That doesn't even, doesn't even rhyme with the, the original song. It's stupid. Ooh, these sticks look clean. Just look at how clean that Dominator branding looks with the Corsair logo, Platinum RGB right below it. It just looks so pristine. It looks like an Apple product. No, not supposed to like Apple products here. I'm just kidding. I don't care. Apple's cool. Oh, and we got the plastic peel. Ooh, ooh. Let me just stick these in. Stick these little guys in here. So again, 32 gigs, which gives you a pretty high ceiling to work with. You really gotta be doing a lot of multitasking or running some super RAM intensive, you know, like two Google Chrome tabs or something in order to eat up this much RAM. Oh, I didn't take the plastic wrap off the other, the second dim. It's a little stubborn. Your friend can go in first. He's ready. Man, these sticks are clean. I like these way more than the black ones. I think they just look better in white. You know how there are some cars that look better in certain colors? These sticks were meant for white. All right, 32 gigs of RAM installed. We also have <coughs> RGB cables, which, okay, fine. 
So we just got one cable coming off of the water block. Yes, just this little micro USB cable. And the other end will actually connect to a USB 2.0 header on our motherboard so that we can have RGB control, if it'll work. RGB works half the time, I feel. Sometimes less than half the time. We'll see how it goes, though. Oh, you know what I forgot to include? Ah, M.2. We need an M.2 drive or some kind of storage, which I want M.2. So let's take a gander. You know, I'm just gonna pull one from a build I was gonna do over here. Without revealing too much about this build, I will just pull... Whoosha! MP600, one terabyte from Corsair, NVMe PCIe Gen 4, baby. And we are on the B550 chipset, so we have full support for that. Let's do it. So we're gonna install the M.2 drive at the top slot, because I believe this is the only slot that's wired for PCI Gen 4. Other one's Gen 3. So to ensure maximum performance, go in top slot, baby. And don't forget to take the sticker off the thermal pad. That would not be good. All right, here's an MP600 in the flesh. And uh, of course, we don't need the uh, pre-installed heatsink here. As lovely as it is, functions pretty well, looks cool, but we already have one on the board, so too bad. Ugh. Sometimes M.2 drives scare me. They're basically just little sticks of gum. That was also not the most graceful dismount of a heatsink that I've seen, but here we are. Um, all right, uh, I need a standoff. There's a standoff here. I'm going to, nope, that's the standoff for the other thing. Let me get it from the motherboard box. I always forget that accessory. It's weird, because sometimes, sometimes it'll be included already. We'll have the M.2 screw and standoff pre-installed. Sometimes it's not. It's like motherboard standoffs. What is it? What is it about standoffs? They just can't make up their minds. Do they want to? Do they want to be installed or not? One M.2 standoff coming right up. Ugh, they're so tiny. My freaking fat fingers can't freaking. There we go. Oh, this is kind of therapeutic. I love building PCs, and I'm glad you love watching me build them, or I'd be homeless. Showing. One terabyte of NVMe storage installed. Yeah. <laughs> this build's coming along pretty quickly, actually. We'll be done in no time. Did I over tighten this one? Because this side's not going down. Go down. Oh, it's because I'm. I do this all the time. It's flipped. Nap nap. Sure we do. You dumb cow. You big old dumb. You and your dumb face. All right, that's better. That's better. Okay, now we can actually install this in the case. We're already ready for case installation. Cool, or motherboard installation, I should say. Installing motherboard into case. Let's do it. And just really quick, I just wanna show you guys the backside of this case uh, because this is the most different part of the original PC-11 Dynamic non-mini. Um, is that this is highly configurable. You can, there's different ways that you can actually swap out these modular pieces. This is, this all, like, like, look at how many screws there are. So many freaking thumb screws. So you can actually do a mini ATX, micro ATX, or ATX board in this case. Can it do EATX? I don't know. I, I will, I will let you know. But, um, highly configurable. You can move the board up or down depending on how you configure this so that you can have more radiator support at the bottom or top of the chassis. It's highly configurable. We're gonna keep it in the standard positioning right now and see how that goes. This comes off in much the same way that the original does. Bada bing, bada boom. Lay me down, baby, lay me down. All right, now before we install the motherboard, I first have to mount this extension standoff plate to the case that allows us three more standoffs for an ATX board. So I think it just goes in Kind of like that. Oh, that's nice. That slides in real easy. Woo! -hoo. All right, let me just get some screws. Three little screws. I love seeing things that are different, cases that are different, things on cases that I have not seen before. It's so refreshing, mostly because it's so uncommon these days. It's always rinse and repeat, same old, same old. I think we're ready for the board now, which has a pre-installed IO shield, so you don't have to worry about that. All the other motherboard standoffs in the case are pre-installed as well. Makes it easy peasy. I love how the IO shield, check this out. It's the attention to detail, man. The IO shield on the board is like this matte white, or it's, I guess it's kind of glossy, but it looks matte here in the lighting, but uh, isn't that nice? Isn't that, ni isn't that nice how it just matches the case and stuff? I don't know. I know it's just a stupid little thing, but I, I kind of like it. That is too thick, too coarse. That's as coarse as a horse. And I can't even get it out now. Uh-oh. Hello, screw, what are you doing? 
Screwball. No! Oh, shit. It's because I pulled the standoff out with it. Oh my goodness. Hey guys, we may have a problem. Oh, I can't do it by hand. I hate everything. Oh, now I gotta pull out a stupid plier. Ugh, I haven't done that in a long time. I feel like it's been at least a year or two since this happened where I used the wrong size screw. It got stuck in the standoff. And then as I was trying to remove the screw, it took the standoff out of the case and would not allow me to remove the screw without doing something like that. Okay, we're still on track here, folks. Don't, don't get too worried. That ought to do it. Maybe try using the right screws this time, Kyle. You royal f up. I wonder what this would look like with white screws, white motherboard screws. Probably not very good. It just looked like little white dots on the board. If it was a white PCB, now we're talking. This case kind of with an ATX board sort of gives the motherboard a floating effect because there's no actual, it's kind of hanging off the edge, right? Kind of hanging off the cliff of the motherboard tray, which gives it a slightly unique look. It's subtle. You wouldn't really notice it unless you were looking for it, but um, it's kind of cool. And I didn't, I honestly didn't think the additional um, standoff plate that I installed would hold up and that it would feel sturdy, but it really does. It feels super solid. Like I thought the board was gonna flex as I was you know, pushing down on this. It doesn't. It, it feels like it's actually part of the main motherboard tray, which is great. Okay, that just about does it for motherboard. How do I wanna route this long ass cable? It's so long that I can just route it from behind. I'll deal with it later. And because we've gone with an ATX board in this case, that may limit our radiator mounting locations. We can obviously mount it right here. I think this might be the obvious place right here on the side. Ooh, I don't like how those hoses look there though. Or right here, if there's room, uh, that's probably gonna be too tight. Yo. Yeah, no. And then the bottom, you could do the bottom, but then the graphics card is going to get in the way. So I think, I think going this way is, is the move. Ooh, I can even do it at the bottom like this, but that doesn't look good. It doesn't look great. Something like this, something like this could work. Yeah, I'm feeling this, yo. All right, let's get the fans on now that we know which way they should face. All right, we've got our uni fans here and these just interlock in place. So th there's a look at the gold contacts. Move it up a little closer here. Gold contacts right there. They just uh, bump uglies here. So you just gotta go like this, snap them together. Look at that, look at that. It's so simple, but so genius. And I'm so surprised it took any company this long to come up with this design. It's absolutely fantastic. And then uh, the way it's gonna work is once we mount it, or actually I could probably do it now, the way that it gets connected is just with this single cable. This guy connects to one end, the other gold contact here, which looks to be, oh, I think it's this way. Ugh, like that. Okay, so there's two cables. One for the fan, one for the RGB, of course. But this literally cuts down the number of wires in half if you're using two fans, because most RGB fans would have two wires coming off of them or some other crappy controller. This is just a really nice seamless solution. So let's get this on the radiator. Just gonna thread them all through first. Yoink. Okay. You know, some people are always amazed that I've gone this long without buying a good electric screwdriver. I do have one on hand, but it's huge. It's definitely a bit more heavy duty than what I need when building PCs. But you know what? I kind of like the old school twist and turn, you know? I feel like uh, electronic screwdrivers take the fun out of building. You know, I know people are like, well, how fun can screwing really be? Oh, don't, don't make me answer that. You know, I, I just think that I kind of prefer the more hands-on feel. Maybe I'm just used to doing it this way. And I'm sure if I switched over to using an electric screwdriver long enough, I'd be like, I'm never going back. All right, let's get this installed. <sighs> oh, dude, that's gonna look so good. All right, we're looking at the back side of the case here where we can screw the radiator in from behind. Woo -hoo. Oh my God. Oh no, I just realized. SFX, ATX. <laughs> oh no, this is just a really bad oversight on my part, guys. For whatever reason, I just assumed that this had a full size power supply bracket or no wait. Yeah, yeah, okay, this is, pff, I'm dumb. Double dumb, this is for the drives, this is for the power supply, but it's it's tiny, it's SFX. I don't know why I thought, oh man, it just seems so spacious. That was the whole MO of the case, but it's probably because it has an SFX unit. You know, they're like, it's full size, you can put an ATX, you can put mini ATX, I just thought, well, then you can put any power supply in too. I did, I completely overlooked this fact 
which means we'll have to use a different unit. I hope I have one on hand. Otherwise, I'm just gonna have to use the Asus one and mount it externally or just leave it outside of the case with this side panel off, which will be stupid, but um, at least we can get it lit up for the video and then I'll fix it later, like I always do most of the time. But anyway, um, yeah, SFX only, guys. Bear that in mind. Learn from my mistakes. Oh my gosh, like the one I just made here. Screw this into the wrong freaking rail. What is wrong with me today? What is wrong with me every day, honestly? Oh shoot, I just poked that by accident. Eh, it's not a big deal. Okay, now I kind of wish I had an electric screwdriver. You guys know any good electric screwdrivers? Yeah? Uh, are they single? Uh -huh. Going to undo this bracket, which looks to be for a couple SSDs. Nuts. Got them. But I'm removing this, even though we're not installing anything on it, so I can access the front panel cables, front panel connectors. We'll pass these through really quick. Okay, more uni fans. Let's do it. Let's do it. We've got three of them going up here now. Boom, boom. Oh, whoa, hey. Oh, it's so nice. It's so nice to be able to install them as one unit. Like I know I still have to, I still have the same number of screws and everything, but it just makes it so nice, so nice and, and easy. Look at that. These will look really good because the LEDs are on the edge of the fan. Notice that the blades aren't lit up. It's actually the, uh, the frame that lights up. So especially when you've got fans up top and bottom that are showing this side as opposed to the actual fan blade side, you can really see the lighting a lot more. I'm very curious to see what it looks like all lit up. I don't think I've ever seen it in person, or if I did, it was like at a CES years ago when CES was still a thing that you could attend in person, but I've completely forgotten what they look like turned on. We're almost there. Two more. Two more. Dos mas. Dos mas screw Ta-da! That looks really good. Let's wrap this behind. Oh man, I really should have plugged in the power cable first or the motherboard for the EPS, 8-pin EPS, because it's pretty tight up there, I will admit. It's a little tighter up there than I will admit. Oh, woohoo! There you go. Make them less visible. Oh, I just realized I forgot to take the plastic peel off the IO shield. Whoops. And there it goes. You know, while we're here, might as well try to route this sucker as well. Let's see, what's the most discreet path we can take? Maybe I'll go behind the GPU. Maybe it'll be better like that. Or I can follow the same path as the pump cable. Somewhat, if there's an opening. Yeah. Let's see how this looks. Oh, that kind of blends. Yeah. So now it just kind of looks like there's one cable coming off of it instead of two. Right? You agree, you can't see anything. Ugh, no, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Ugh, yeah. I wish these cables were black, all things considered. I appreciate the uh, the thought, but... But I think with all the black mobos, it's better to just keep them black when it comes to the wires. All right, I'll deal with this later. I ain't got time for that. I guess we might as well install the rest of the unis. Okay, opening up four more of these. Okay, these are the last three fans that I'm gonna install because there is one more mount for uh, a fan at the back of the case, but then we'd have really negative pressure. It's already negative enough. We have three, four, five 120 millimeter exhausts and only three 120 intakes. So we're already dealing with some negative pressure here. The system might get a bit dustier more quickly than normal, but I think it's gonna look good. We're, we're going for aesthetics here, okay? And I'm, I'm definitely not gonna be using this system or anything for personal use, so I don't really care about the dust. Boom. Or should I mount that fan at the back? Oh, I don't know, because I think it would look cool, but that's just a lot of exhausts. I don't know, I have to think about it. It's the hardest decision I've had to make in a long time. You know, I totally jinx myself, because this is by far the most screws I've had to screw in in any build in a long time. And of course I said I could care less about an electronic screwdriver, and that's sounding really good right now. Fans installed. Okay, let's let's sort out this power supply thing. Okay, so fast forward maybe 10 minutes since the last clip, and this is what I've set up so far. Power supply. 
externally mounted ATX PSU that will not fit in this case because it only supports SFX. And I do not have, I searched high and low for an SFX unit that was available because I have a bunch of them that are already in systems and stuff. And you know, with small form factor cases, it's just a pain in the ass to, to uninstall them. Sometimes you have to uninstall literally everything else in order to get to them. So since I don't have a proper unit, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna be lazy and leave it hanging out. So this side of the case will be more or less unfinished. Cable management is non-existent. You can see I've already wired up our RGB controller for all the uni fans, as well as our streamer cables. These are already plugged in, just need to plug them in on the other end, and we're pretty much ready for the graphics card, and then we'll be able to see the build in all of its glory. I guess we should just finish this off really quick. So if you can't already tell, this build is going to look phenomenal. I actually cannot wait to see it all lit up. I haven't done like a crazy RGB everything system in a while. The streamer cables are just gonna take it over the edge, I think, as they often do. Ooh, let's see if I can route this underneath the USB 3.0 cable. Hey, hey, we are ready for graphics card, people. Hey, I'm actually whistling a Christmas song during Christmas time. Usually, you can even have Paul confirm this. I, I tend to whistle Christmas songs year round. Three, two, one. Graphics card installed. Interesting, these screws are not thumb screws. I wonder why. Maybe it's because they're a little bit more recessed and harder to get to, but. Oh, we just have one more cable to connect. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I also installed the back fan. I just decided to. I just want that RG bling. That's all I care about right now. Okay, streamers are a go. Oh my God, this build's gonna be insane. Off the charts, yo. You came undone, son. Get back in there. Fall back in line, soldier. Oh, don't do this to me right now. Don't do it. No! Oh God! All right, here we go. These streamer cables are really thick, thick, so they can be hard to train. But once you get them down, once you get them compliant, they don't they don't budge. So from this side, you know, from this side, guys, it looks complete. Like you don't even you don't even know what's going on back here. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's a video. I'm not using this thing. Who cares, right? Okay, I think we are finally ready to boot. For the very first time, let's hit it. <laughs> what? Oh my god. Oh, wait, why? Why? Why aren't these lighting up? These three fans, but everything else is like. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, wait, that fan's not. Oh no. What's happening? It's like I feel so conflicted. I'm excited, but also confused. Why? Hold on, hold on. Okay, the fan cable for this fan just came loose. It's fine now, but. I'm still not exactly sure why these fans aren't lighting up. Something tells me that I have to download the Lian Lee software, the RGB software, to actually get these functional. I don't think there's anything wrong with the wiring. I checked, all the connections are secure, but oh my God, this looks so good. This looks so good. This might be one of my favorite, if not my favorite all time RGB build that I've ever put together. I'm, I'm mesmerized. I really can't take my eyes off of it. I know unicorn vomit isn't for everyone, but f everyone. No, I'm just kidding, I love you guys. All right, I give up. I, I've been trying to access the Lian Lee website for the last 20 minutes and it's just down, it's not working. So I don't care, I don't care. I'm not gonna let RGB delay this video any further. I'm not gonna let it ruin my day. It's just RGB and, and it already looks pretty glorious. And besides, it's the very bottom. You can already imagine what it would look like if it was lit up. It would just look like that, but down there. So um, there it is, there's the build. So thank you to Lian Lee, Asus, Corsair, uh, especially Lian Lee though for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link in the description below if you wanna enter that giveaway to win one of these beautiful PCO 11D mini snow edition cases that uh, again, are not even for sale right now. So um, it's a pretty cool giveaway. Do it, enter. The giveaway officially starts on December 17th at 9 a.m. Eastern, and then it officially ends on the 27th of December at midnight Eastern time. So there you go. Again, it is international, so everyone's got a chance to win, unless giveaways are prohibited by local law, of course. And that's pretty much it. Let's, let's just take a quick, quick look at how it's going in here. Um, the fans are really quiet. I mean, for having nine of them in here, it's actually stupid how quiet it is. I'm, I'm kind of shocked. When, when I first fired up the system, I was a little nervous because you know the fans usually ramp up uh, to 100% or close to it, but they quieted down really quick and they sound like nothing. I think the parts came together really well in the end. I mean, I, I didn't really think too much about it. I was just like, this part's white, this part's white. RGB is good. 
and then uh, and then wow, I just I just love it when it works out in the end. So there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this build. If you like the video and you like the build, toss a like on it. It helps me a lot. Get subscribed to the channel for more tech content on the way, guys. And I will see y'all in the next video.